everyone. Um, I'm Joyce Garzinski. I'm the Assistant University Librarian for Communications and Digital Scholarship here at Cook Library. And today, along with Carrie Price, Miranda Fair, and Sung Yao Chen, we are presenting Getting Started with Cook Library's New Scholarly Research Support Services. I'll let the other presenters introduce themselves. I'm listed, so I'll, I'll just go ahead. I'm Carrie Price. I am the Research Impact and Health Professions Librarian in this department. And my name is Miranda Fair, and I am the Publishing and Open Scholarship Librarian. Buddy, uh, I'm Song Yao Chen, and I'm the Data Science Librarian here. So um, today, what we're going to start off by doing is um, talking about what comes to mind when you think of digital scholarship. So um, feel free to add uh, your thoughts in chat. Um, what are some words that that come to mind when you hear that term? Like I know when I first heard the term, like computer research came to mind. I didn't quite know what it was, but I feel like it involved technology in some way. I had digital humanities, digital publishing. So um, let's see what kinds of definitions um, we, we have. So here's a definition from the Library of Congress. Um, it's pretty involved, but I think there are three central ideas here. Um, one is that it's, it's research that uses digital collections and tools and methods. So it encompasses all of those those things we just mentioned, um, those digital humanities and, and data um, as well. And broadly defined that it's got the purpose of furthering knowledge. Um, really, it's it's not just you know playing around with technology, but it's really you know representing knowledge um, in a new way. And I think it's also um, this idea of um, breaking down disciplinary boundaries. So there's a real sense of collaboration um, in these projects. So a lot of times um, what you're going to see is that sense of uh, collaboration and working across different departments and, and boundaries. So I wanted to share um, some examples from other universities of digital scholarship uh, projects. So first, we've got this one, um, Virulent Hate um, from the University of Michigan. And this one really uses mapping to look at uh, in a new way at instances of hate um, and bias against um, Asian Americans during COVID. And uh, let me see if I can um, link to it and share here. I don't know if you're still seeing my PowerPoint or if you're seeing my screen here. Are you still seeing the PowerPoint? This is PowerPoint. Okay. So um, let me stop sharing and share this so you have an idea. Really, it's a very comprehensive project that gathered media about instances of hate and racism and also um, created mapping tools as well. Um, so it really encourages encourage researchers to look at these um, incidents in a new way. Um, so it it brings together different fields of epidemiology as well as geography and the social sciences too. So it really does cross those uh, interdisciplinary boundaries. Let me go back to my PowerPoint here. Um, I also wanted to share um, the RAND Lab um, data archive. This is a beautiful example of um, different, uh, it's, it's more of like a, a science lab that looks at and, and saves and preserves images 
um, of different specimens and looking at data um, across time and and creating these beautiful visualizations in biology. Um, so definitely a science application, um, but it really does bring in that visual element and how we can can look at um, biology in a whole different way visually. And um, I also wanted to share the um, the Grinnell Be Beowulf um, project that looks, it, it took a class basically and looked at um, annotating and translating Beowulf. And so um, there are opportunities for these kinds of projects and classes as well. So you can see that element of learning and bringing together different disciplines in the use of this technology. So here at Towson, um, I wanted to share uh, what we're doing. Uh, this is a brand new department here. It's uh, called the CODS department, um, but it's more than just uh, communication, outreach, and digital scholarship. We have a brand new team here as well um, that's working beyond our department to share these initiatives. So our performing arts librarian is, is very interested in the digital humanities and is part of our team um, as well. So, um, and this has led to quite a few new services that we're all offering. And we have a brand new website here. Let me show you that, that details our services. And so this is our, um, our new website. I'll put the link in the chat here. So that way you have it. And we've broken down our services into three groups, um, create, so how you, um, can create these new projects and some of our uh, services that will help you with that. Um, publishing um, and some of our resources that can help you in those areas, um, including looking at copyright and um, publishing open access, as well as our research impact. And so, um, you know, how do you share out your, your research that you create? So, um, this is our some of our brand new offerings. And in terms of working with us, um, we have a variety of models. Um, we are happy to meet with you and offer consultations on projects that you're working on, all the way up through grant funded um, partnerships. So we're working currently on creating um, a grants menu and this menu, um, which will be linked to the page that I just showed you, um, is how we can support um, grant funded digital scholarship projects. So the the bottom line is, you know, we want to learn more about what it is that you need in order to um, successfully create and, and launch these new projects. So now I'd like to give you the opportunity to hear more from our team. Um, and here's a, a photo of us presenting at a library conference um, about our services. So um, each of our team members are gonna talk about um, what they do and how you can work with them um, on your projects. So who wants to go first? I can go first. Okay. Uh, so, um... Well, good afternoon, everybody. For those who just joined uh, our meeting, um, again, my name is Song Yao Chen, and I am the data science librarian uh, here at Cook Library of uh, Towson University. And uh, my primary work here um, in the Department of CODS is providing research data services. Um, let me share my screen to show you what I can do for you. Oh.
Okay. So I'm using the page of the libguide that I created and maintained to briefly introduce the research data services. Research data services um, or research data management, as you can see here, we have a conception of what it is, but specifically and briefly speaking, um, considering our specific cases are, I am providing the services covering the supports um, that could be happened in every phases of um, data life cycle from plan to collect, to assure, to describe, preserve, discover, integrate, and analyze, et cetera. So specifically speaking, I can support uh, to sub support your data management planning, support uh, some cases that, or tasks uh, that happen in your research project related to data visualization or data analysis. And I can support your courses or your, your classes or your research project related to um, data sets, uh, searching, data repository evaluation, or picking, or and, and data preservation, and something like that, et cetera. I encourage you uh, to going through the, let me put this in the chat box, going through my libguide of data to find out what I can do and uh, encourage I encourage you to approach to me, contact me for anything you think that I can help with you related to data or, or data uh, research data services, etc. So I would like to show you something um the 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 current situation of the research data data services cases I have supported and I am supporting now by using by using some kind of uh, figures and lines and pies through a data visualization tool that I like very much, Power BI, as you can see here. So as you can see the numbers, um, this year, I mean, from the last August to now, all we, all the cases numbers is 18. Well, actually, actually, if we're talking about the cases until today, right now, it's actually about 20 or something like that, but I haven't included the newest two into that number. So basically speaking, I have supported totally 18 cases. In this 18 cases, uh, we, we all have 17 researchers with 12 affiliations. On the left, you can see the numbers and bars of, of the affiliations. Well, I can, <laughs> as you can see right now, if we're talking about the number of students, is the biggest group that I have provided support to. I'll talk about later briefly is, is that all of the cases here are related to data sets searching and some suggestions or some discussions related to their final assignments or final project of the semester. But other cases here are all related to data management plans for their grant proposals, data visualizations, or data analysis for their research project, which you can see on the right service category here, we all have three, data analysis, visualization, data storage, and data management plan. If we click that, for example, data analysis and visualization, we can No, yeah, we can see the numbers here and some changes here. As you can see, talking about the data visualization and data analysis cases, for example, we have one case from kinesiology, two from writing center, and one from library ourselves, and one from speech language and pathology. And related in these cases, one case is related to the grant pro proposal of NIH. And if we click this one, data management plan, we right now we have two with NIH, one, one with NI, NIJ and one with DOD and two with NSF. And here is the case situation from now. So 
I'm not going to talk too much because I know I'm going to, to talk too much if if um nobody interrupted me, but I would like just uh, want to, like to know that briefly and generally speaking, right now, um in reality, I have supported 18 cases in three different service categories, data analysis, data visualization, data, data storage, and data management plan covering almost every college of, of, of the TU campus. And I can support almost everything related to data. This is just some kind of a primary cases that I want to include. I haven't included some uh, one case-by-case uh, case uh, consultations or instructions in it. So I'm going to stop here and encourage you to go through the libguide of data and encourage you to contact me if you wanted to learn more about the services uh, that I am providing right now. And of course, I have another single workshop talking about the research data services I'm providing right now, later. So thank you. I'm going to stop share right now. And I, I will go next um, and I'll talk a bit about publishing. Um, so once you've got your project, I'm sure you want to make sure it gets in front of the most eyes as possible. It's the more people that see it, the better. Um, so what might be different um, if you're working on a digital project, especially a collaborative one, is that you're probably the expert in your field on what journals you should be publishing in, but maybe you're not publishing a traditional article in this case, or maybe you're working with researchers across a lot of different disciplines um, and you're not really sure which one to publish in. So this is sort of on more of the consultation end of things. I'm happy to talk to you about um, your project specifically, where it might be a good home for it. Um, and we can try to figure that out. I've talked to researchers who have been rejected for fit and they've wanted to look for a new place to publish. Um, or it, again, might be in a different field than they've published in, in the past. Um, another thing is what if you aren't publishing an article at all and you're looking for a home for um some other kind of project, I can help you find appropriate repositories. You might want to put things in online. Um, and I would encourage, and we could talk about this in any case, to um, publish open access because a lot of these projects are, um, especially a lot of things that are, are born digital. Um, you might be required to from a funder or you might just want to, but that is another way to increase visibility of your work. Um, what comes with that also is licensing considerations. So if you also need help um, navigating different open licenses, wanting to know what they allow you to do, what allow they allow others to do with your work, um, if you come across work that is openly licensed, especially if it's a Creative Commons license, um, I can consult on how you might be able to use it and incorporate it into your own work. Um, some of very specific rules about what you can do as far as remixing. Um, so that's sort of on the consultation end. Um, something that's closer to the um, like grant funded partnerships end is if you're interested in starting a journal yourself, we have a scholarly publishing team, which I lead, um, and I would be happy to talk to you further. Um, usually these are done as part of a grant. Um, we have one that's up now and taking submissions. So this will, I should probably just share my screen for this. Oh, I'm not allowed to share it. So, um, this is journals.towson.edu. The one we're going to look at is Tapestry. Um, this is a, um, new journal that is currently taking submissions that is looking for um, submissions on um, like teach from educators and um, especially that teach English language learners. Um, they have their submission guideline here. Now this is a bit more involved than just a consultation. So we would definitely have to discuss realistic timelines. Um, I know they're doing theirs as part of a um, grant that they got 
Um, so we've got their sponsor here, an Elevate Grant. Um, but there's there's policy information, and you're you're welcome to look at this. You have some um, sort of control over what the visuals look like, but we host these um, through OJS, which is um, an open source journal hosting platform. Um, there is a slight learning curve with it, but it is, I don't think it's that much harder to learn than something like WordPress. And I think the functionality is a lot better. Um, I will stop sharing. That is about all I have for now, unless there's specific questions. And I'll go next. My name is Carrie Price, and I am the Research Impact and Health Professions Librarian here. And so some of the projects that I've worked on are helping faculty understand their research impact. So how many citations they've gotten, uh, who's tweeted their article or posted it on a blog, looking for journals, which I can do in collaboration with Miranda. We can look at journal metrics. And um, I just wanna share my screen too. So we do have a research metrics guide at Towson and I'll just walk you through it. Put a link in the chat. So research metrics overview and my contact information is here. A little bit about ethics in research metrics, which has been a big topic for at least the last decade or so. And then some links for author metrics. Uh, ORCID is Open Researcher and Contributor ID. It's a not uh, um, it's not affiliated with any organization or institution. It's a collaboration of many people who can get you set up kind of like with a social security number for your research output. It doesn't change even if you change names, if you change institutions, and it's free. So I'll just mention that ORCID is a really great tool. Then there are article level metrics for looking at uh, uh, how your articles have been cited and used or looking for highly cited articles in your field. There are journal metrics to help you identify journals that are potentially of a higher quality and have more impact. And then I have links to tools and resources. Uh, Lens.org, so I'll just go here. And they have profiles, so you can look up yourself, you can look up someone else. Um, the other thing that I do, I'll stop sharing, is help faculty with evidence synthesis. So I've spent a good dozen years working in evidence synth synthesis, systematic and scoping reviews, and I help a lot of faculty in the College of Health Professions with those sorts of scholarship. I can point you to, to conducting guidelines and to reporting guidelines and help you with the search. So that's something I really enjoy doing. Um, and I guess I should have mentioned too that in addition to individual metrics, I can help departments look at their metrics. So the entire department of nursing, for example, I could potentially look up some metrics to see their impact. And I'll stop talking there. Thank you. Thank you so much um, to the team um, for sharing what they do and, and do incredibly well. So uh, let me go back to my PowerPoint. So um, I just wanted to talk for a little bit about things that uh, should be considered when you're starting a digital uh, scholarship project. So, um, and these are the things we're gonna ask you uh, about. Um, so it's it's really good to consider these um, when you're, you're working on these projects. So first of all, who's the intended audience? Um, you know, a lot of these projects these these projects live online, but is there a specific audience um, that is going to be interested in your project? Um, who might be interested in building on or um, reusing the content that you create? Um, also, who's going to be involved in the creation um, of this project? Is it 
connected to a class or um, is it your own research? Um, we want to be involved too. We want to support you and, and help you as well. So um, figuring out who those contributors are and what role they're going to play is, is really significant. Um, also, where's the funding going to come from? Um, you may need access to specialized tools, uh, software, technology, um, in order to create these projects. And also, um, especially if you're funded by a grant, um, people's time uh, to, to do this work. So, um, you know, it, it's important to figure out, you know, how much time is involved as well. Um, in some cases, student workers um, or even part-time associates might be needed uh, to do the work. And speaking of funding for tools, what kinds of digital tools uh, are you going to need on your project? A lot of the, the projects that I showed you earlier rely on specialized mapping software, um, do we have the data analysis capabilities that you may need, the mapping software? Um, or um, do you need something that we don't have? So um, that's really important to consider what, what kinds of tools you're going to need. Um, also, what kinds of storage? Um, digital projects can take up a lot of space, a lot of gigabytes. So where are you going to store your files? Um, and your, your project isn't finished once it's available online. Um, it needs to be maintained and, and updated. So what's your, where is it going to be hosted? Are you publishing it open access? Um, and who will have access to it when? Um, all important things to consider. And also um, copyright. Not only are you going to need to consider um, the copyright for your own work and how you want to license it, um, if you want to make it available through Creative Commons, but also um, of the material that you're using in your project um, as you develop it. So. Um, do you have the, the copyright to those materials that make up your project? Um, so you want to carefully consider your rights as a creator and also um, others' rights as, um, you know, you're reusing their work. And finally, um, publicity. How do you want to share your project? Uh, do you want to, to have an event? Um, do you want to use it in teaching and scholarship and, and listservs and on social media? So um, the library has a number of avenues that can help you um, with that as well. And we're working on building some additional avenues uh, in the next few years to help you with that as well. So these are all things to consider as you're creating a, a digital scholarship project. So we really want to hear from you. Um, what are your ideas and questions um, that you have related to um, these things to consider or potential projects? Um, so if anyone who's attending has any questions, um, we'd, we'd love to, to hear from you.